Hi, welcome to another episode of Talking with Docs. I'm Dr. Brad Weening. And I'm Dr. Paul Zalzal. So this video is going to be discussing shoulder dislocations. Okay, Paul, so when someone says they dislocated their shoulder, what does that mean? Well, if you pass me a I have one, man. shoulder to look at. You can see this is a, a model of a right shoulder. Um, and the part of the shoulder that is affected with a shoulder dislocation is here at the glenohumeral joint. So I'm going to dislocate this shoulder to show the anatomy. Bang, I just fell or leaned into a wall too hard. Here's our glenoid. Here's the top of the humerus, the head of the humerus. This articulates or make a, makes a joint here. And if the shoulder dislocates, the head of the humerus has come out of the glenoid. If it subluxes, it's just teetered out and popped itself back in. So a subluxation versus a complete dislocation. Okay, so that can happen in a setting of trauma or sometimes with minimal trauma. Um, what, how does it present? What do people complain about? They usually complain of excruciating pain. So this is going to present to the emergency room with a pain and obvious deformity and inability to move the arm, some swelling, maybe some numbness. Right. Occasionally, yeah, they can have numbness in that arm for sure. Um, and then when they get to the emergency room, some people say, oh, my shoulder dislocated and then uh, I just popped it back in, kind of like uh, Mel Gibson in Lethal oh, Weapon. Yeah. Is that possible? That can happen. Yeah, you can have a dislocation and if it pops back in, we call it a spontaneous reduction. But in the people that are not Mel Gibson, typically what has to happen? Well, you're, you have to go to the emergency room and you have to have uh, the shoulder reduced. So there's certain maneuvers the emergency room physician or orthopedic surgeon can do to help get the shoulder back in joint. And actually sometimes it takes a surprising amount of medication because your muscles are holding it there in spasm because it hurts so much. They have to be deeply sedated and then it pops back in. Usually they'll get an x-ray to make sure that it's uh, in place and also to make sure that there's not an associated fracture. So sometimes you can break the, the ball of your shoulder joint, your proximal humerus, or even the inferior part of your glenoid. And there are a bunch of specific names for that and they have uh, relevant indications for later on having problems. Right, and we always uh, get an x-ray, just as Dr. Weening mentioned, after the reduction, after it's put back in, uh, which is termed reduction. After the reduction, we get an x-ray to make sure that everything's back in place. So, I had a fall or uh, some other trauma, just my shoulder, it's been reduced and then put in a sling, most likely. Yep. What next? Uh, so usually you're going to have some type of follow-up, usually with an orthopedic surgeon. So you end up in the fracture clinic and um, when I see these people, typically I keep, I do an examination to make sure that there isn't a neurologic injury. That's probably the, the most uncommon, but the thing that you don't want to miss. Keep them in a sling, immobilized for two or three weeks or some other type of special immobilization device. Um, and then when I bring them back at three weeks, I make sure that they're improving and then usually I get them into rehab. Uh, that's right. That's key. And rehabilitation is the key because you have to strengthen the muscles around the shoulder to prevent it from happening again. So is this going to happen again after I dislocate my shoulder? So it could and it really, really depends primarily on your age. So when you are young, there's a very, very high chance that it could pop out of the socket again. So I tell people starting at around age 20 if it happens, the chance of it happening again approaches 100%. As you get older, the odds of a recurrent dislocation becomes less and less common. And I have a magic age of around 40. Uh, if you're younger than 40, there's a significant chance that it'll recur. If you're over 40, uh, there's a less of a chance that it's going to recur. So there you go. A good reason to be over 40. There you go. It's not there. a lot. <laughs> not a lot. That's one. <laughs> yes. So if you are 20 and you come to my clinic, I say, well, usually you have a three strikes policy. So if you become a recurrent dislocator, it increases the chance that you need an operation. So I, a lot of times people will let them dislocate three times and then talk about an operation. What I do is if they dislocated once and they're 20, I say, three strikes, you're out. You've already had one strike and the next two strikes are coming. Right. Uh, and now if you're older with a shoulder dislocation, um, in your 50s or your 60s, recurrence is much less likely. That's the good news. The bad news is shoulder stiffness is one of the complications that can happen after yeah. that. So, so we try to move those people a little bit quicker than the younger people. Right. And now, Dr. Weening, does the shoulder always pop out the front like that? So no, 90% of the time I'd say it comes out the front, maybe even a little bit higher, and then very uh, infrequently, but still can happen, it can be a posterior dislocation, and that's usually because of either a seizure or an electrical shock. Yeah. So if you get struck by lightning or are leaning up against a high voltage fence, yeah, don't. Don't do that. <laughs> but <laughs> Go ahead. <laughs> if you do, what happens is your muscles go into spasm and, and in unbalanced way and the, some of the balance, some of the muscle forces ends up pushing you out the back. 
And it's a little bit trickier to diagnose on x-ray too, so you actually need some very special x-rays to make sure that it's actually reduced. Um, Paul, say you've become a recurrent dislocator and you're thinking about surgery or even early on someone's concerned about that. Do you do any other tests other than an x-ray? Uh, there are other tests that you want to do to, to, so you can try and understand the anatomy and what's been damaged. So you, you could look at an MRI to get a better look at the soft tissues, the rotator cuff and the capsule around the shoulder. And sometimes they'll do that test with some dye. Mm -hmm. An MRI arthrogram will, will look at that very specifically or an ultrasound, I guess, depending to start where you are. Um, any, anything else about the shoulder dislocation? That's it. So bottom line is young, athletic type person, uh, probably going to need surgical intervention because you may go on to recurrence. Uh, not young, I'm not going to say old, not young, um, you got to watch out for shoulder stiffness and you're going to have to do a lot of physio to get your shoulder moving again. Excellent. So if you have any further questions, please feel free to email us at info at talkingwithdocs.com. And remember, you are in charge of your own health. And if you enjoy these videos, please like us on YouTube or subscribe to our channel and we'll see you next time.